If you've been watching my videos for the past year or so, you'll know that I've been using a rock climbing harness as my safety tether for my hang on tree stand, for plenty of reasons, some of which I may make an entire video about. And I use it as a replacement for my Lone Wolf Assassin harness. But is the rock harness comfortable enough to be able to use it like a saddle? Well, as is, no. I can sit it for quite a while and talk without too much discomfort. It's a little bit more comfortable if you get into a full sitting position with these harnesses but I wouldn't want to use this for a two or three hour hunt. Luckily, the guys on the Saddle Hunter forum were always trying new things. A couple of them discovered how comfortable the sit drag is and started incorporating it into their minimalist saddle setups. When Brian Landy told me that he preferred his minimalist saddle setup to his traditional hang-on stand for all-day comfort, that really got me interested and I thought, I gotta try this. I wanted my sit drag addition to be easily removable in case I still want to use my rock harness for my hang-on stand, and I also wanted to have a backup safety mechanism. Now the sit drag by itself is really just a sling. I added what's called a bridge to it by tying on a piece of camo one inch tubular webbing rated at around 4,000 pounds. I made the connection on each side by tying a water knot and sized the bridge so that it was long enough to flip up onto my shoulders when walking. I then loosely tied a paracord loop through each end of the sit drag in my rock harness loops. Also, I sewed a buckle in the back center of the sit drag. The other half of the buckle is on the rock harness. The only purpose the paracord loops and plastic buckles serve is to keep the sit drag from flopping around halfway down my thighs while walking. They are not weight bearing. As an extra safety consideration, I added another carabiner to my tree tether. Prusiks and ascenders are pretty much interchangeable for this, although tying a Prusik is much cheaper. Now, this isn't a video on climbing methods or saddle platform selection. So let's just fast forward right to the point where you're set up at hunting height on your platform and you got the tree tether hooked into the blade loop on the rock harness. Everything here is rated for several thousand pounds. I'm very comfortable and confident that this will hold my weight. So now to set up the saddle portion of this with the sit drag, the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and release that little plastic buckle that was holding the sit drag in place and just let it hang. Then I'll take the bridge hook it into the second carabiner and slide the Prusik knot up the tether to the point where it's tight and I now have contact with the sit drag. The last thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and put some slack into the tether that's going into my rock harness. This transfers all the weight comfortably onto the sit drag and the bridge. I can rotate my hips and I still have extreme mobility around the tree. If for whatever reason something would fail in either this Prusik, the carabiner, the bridge, or the sit drag, I would only drop a couple inches before immediately being caught by the tether and rock harness. Now, just sitting like I am, this is comfortable enough where I don't really feel the need for back support. However, if I wanted to, the sit drag did come with a little black strap that's intended to be used as back support. So I'll put that on quick. It's just a piece of webbing with a clip on one end and a loop on the other end. And you just girth hitch around one side of your bridge. Put this around your back. and then clip it on to the other side of your bridge. Now you got back support and hip support and I could sit here like this for hours on end. It's very comfortable. So now disclaimer time, the sit drag is not intended to be used from an elevated position. It's intended to be used on the ground. I feel comfortable the way I personally use it because if something were to fail, I have my rock harness and tether as backup. Just remember that anytime you leave the ground, whether or not you're using store-bought equipment or you're using something that you rigged yourself, you're taking a risk. And if you're using equipment that you've rigged yourself, you have the responsibility for ensuring that you've chosen the correct materials, the correct webbing, the correct hardware, the correct rope, that you've chosen the proper climbing knots and that you're tying them correctly, that you're inspecting your materials before you go out into the woods, just like you would inspect a store-bought harness. Lastly, if you're using any equipment that's in off-label use, so to speak, if something were to happen, the manufacturer is no longer liable, it's your responsibility.